Hi guys, welcome back to this channel. In this video, we are going to be having an introduction course on Java graphical user interface. So we will cover most of the concepts around graphical user interface from dialog boxes, JFrames, windows to button event handling and listening. So the graphical user interface is actually a graphical interface that you create in Java in order to allow your user to interact with your program. So basically, as the name suggests, the interface is graphical, which means that it uses graphical components that the user can use in order to interact with the program. So the first graphical user interface component we will talk about in this video is the input dialog box. So this input dialog box is a graphical user interface in the form of a dialog box that allows you to input data into to a program. So here is the syntax you can use to create an input dialog box. First, we are going to declare a string and then we are going to write this J option pane that show input dialog. Then we are going to open the brackets and inside we will write the message that we want to show on this dialog box. I can say, how are you? And then at the end, of, I will put the semicolon. So as you can see, we are having this J option pane and then the show input dialog box. So now just quickly, let me explain the syntax, the various statements I have written here. So let me start with the string we already know what the string is. It's a data type. And here, str is just the name we have given to our variable that is going to be of type string. And we are having j option pane right here. So this j option pane is a predefined class that is contained in the package javax.swing that we have up here. So what we have to note here is that in order to be able to create a graphical user interface in Java, we have to use package package called java.swing. So that's why we needed to import it up here. And then we have the J option pane, which is a predefined Java class. So this javax.swing contains various classes that will be used to create different other graphical user components, okay? And then we also have the show input dialog, which is a predefined method that you specifically use to create an input dialog box. So we have the J option pane, which is a predefined class. And in that class, we have predefined method called show input dialog, which is used to create an input dialog box. And after that, inside our brackets, we are having a string and uh, we will say, how are you here? So in between the brackets, that's a string that will appear in the dialog box. You can also use to inform the user about what to type in, okay? And uh, so as I said, str here is a string variable because this method show input dialog only returns a string, all right? So that means that all the values inputted through this method are considered as string. So you will see that if you run this uh, portion of code, a dialog box will pop up on the screen. Yeah, there it is. We are having our dialog box on the string. And as you can see, the sentence RRU is showing on our input dialog box, giving the user an idea of what to type in the text field. So I can choose to type in the text field, I am fine like this. And then when I click on OK, the dialog box will disappear. And as I said, the value entered is returned as a string and assigned to the variable str that we have here. So that's basically what happens with input dialog box. To prove that the value has been assigned, I will do a system that out that print line of the variable str so that you will see the value printed out in our console, all right? Let me run this portion of code like this. When I run, the dialog box will appear and I'm gonna write, I am fine. So as soon as I click on okay, 
you will see that I am fine will appear in the console, right? There it is. I am fine. Why is it appearing here is because we have specified the system that out that print line. Okay. So that means that the value I have typed has really been signed to the variable str so that when we come here and then try to output the value stored in that variable, we are actually getting what I type. That's it concerning the input dialog box. So the second GUI component or graphical user interface component that we can talk about is the output dialog box. So different from the input dialog box, this graphical user interface component is used to output a message using a dialog box. Let me write the syntax of this output dialog box. So we are still going to use the predefined class J option pane. And we are also going to use a predefined method that is called show message dialog. Okay. And in this method, it takes some parameters. So the first one is the parent component. I will say null and I will come back to it to explain what that means. And it also takes the message that you want to output. So here it can be a variable, a string variable, or you can directly type your string here. I will say hello world like this. And you can also put the title of the dialogue. And after you can also specify the message type, whether it's an error uh, type of message, or if it's a warning, or if it is just an information that you want to output. So these are pretty much the parameters that this predefined uh, method takes, the show message dialogue predefined method. So as I said, you can notice that we are still using the predefined class J option pane here. So J option pane, which is part of the package Javax that swing but here we are using a different predefined method, which is the method show message dialog. So as you can also see, the method show message dialog takes four parameters. Okay. The first parameter, as I said, is called the parent component parameter, and it represents the parent of the dialog box. So if there is no specified parent component, then this parameter will be null. So that's why I have given that parameter null here. The second parameter represents the message to appear on the dialog box. It can be a constant value as I have written right here as string, or it can be a variable. Okay. And then the third parameter is the title of the dialog box, as I said. Then finally, the fourth parameter is representing the message type. So now if we run this portion of code, you will notice the title, the message, and the icon denoting the message type. Okay, so as you can see here, we are having written as the title of our dialog box. We are having hello world as the message showing on our dialog box. And then we are having this icon I, which is denoting the message type. Okay, so one thing we can note here is that the message type can either be an integer uh, representing a particular type of icon that will appear in the dialog box, or you can use certain J option pane options. Like for example, we could write J option pane that error message. So this is to make sure that we want to output a, an error type of message so that when we click on run, you will see that we're going to have a different icon showing here. So this icon is denoting an error that this message is actually uh, trying to tell us that there's an error or something like that. So there are various J option pane options that we can use. So instead of error message, we could say, for example, information message. Okay. So if we say information message like this and run, we are going to have a different icons, you know, this icon denoting an information. Uh, we could uh, say uh, plain message, for example, and run. There is not going to be any icon because it's a plain message. We could say uh, question message. Okay. 
So when we run, a question mark icon will appear on the dialog box. We could also uh, write a warning, warning message. You know, a warning icon will appear on our output dialog box. And notice that whenever I click on OK, the dialog box disappears. OK, so all these J option pane options can be represented by an integer number. So if I write one here, it's going to show me an information message. Let's try two here and see what is going to show. Now it's showing a warning. Okay. So each J option pane options can be represented by a number. So instead of writing, you know, that long phrase like J option pane that warning underscore message, you can directly write uh, an integer number like one or two or three, depending on what kind of message you want to show on your dialog box. You see, when I write three, it's now showing the question mark icon. If I write four here, uh, now four is not available. Okay. Or uh, if I don't write anything, let's see what will happen. Okay. We definitely need to put uh, an integer. Let me say zero, for example. Okay. So if I write zero, now it's showing this error icon. All right. So that's it concerning the output message. So that's it concerning the output dialog box. So we could combine, you know, uh, this output dialog box with an input dialog box. Let's say, for example, that we are having a string here, str is equal to j option pane that show input, show input dialog. And I'm going to say, how are you? And then that needs to be a string here, all right? And here in the message, I'm going to pass this variable. As we said, the content, you know, the, the second parameter can either be a constant value, an integer, or it can be a variable. So we are going to pass our variable str so that whenever value or whenever a statement we're going to write in our input field is going to show on our output dialog box. So now when I click on run, so how are you? And I'm going to say I am fine. And when I click on OK, there you can see my output dialog box is showing what I just wrote in the input field of my input dialog box. All right. So that's it concerning the input dialog box and the output dialog box. And before we finish, uh, what we can also note is that using dialog boxes has limitations because as, as we could notice, we cannot see more than one dialog box at a time. Whenever you click on OK, the dialog box disappears. So suppose you want to display all the graphical user components uh, in a single interface and be able to have the freedom to add graphical user interface components uh, like buttons by yourself. That's when the concept of JFrame window becomes important. So stay tuned for the next video where we are going to talk about JFrame windows, how to create a window in Java using JFrame. So up to that video, I thank you for watching this particular video and uh, don't forget to like, to share and subscribe. And if you have any question concerning the video, uh, feel free to write in the comments. So let's meet in the next video.